Well, it's been a while since this vehicle was in uh, any of the videos. So today we are going to try to fix the death wobble that this van has. So uh, there's a couple of things that can cause this. If you overheat your brakes, you're going to get into a death wobble for sure. And you're in the mountains, I've had that happen before. And the only thing you can do there is if you warp your rotors, you have to replace them. And replace the pads. And that'll be good for a while if you use uh, ceramic brake pads, but not permanently good. So the uh, ceramic brake pads do not work well on this vehicle at all. You need to have semi-metallic brake pads. These vehicles come from the factory with ceramic brake pads. And a lot of them have death wobble because of it. It doesn't get the uh, news coverage that the Dodges get for whatever reason, but uh, it's very bad on this vehicle from time to time. It's been parked for six months, so the brakes are gonna be kind of crusty. So that uh, might cause it, but we'll take it for a drive. I'm gonna take it to the shop and do a front brake job on this. It sits high, as you can see. This vehicle's got a, like a six inch lift on the front. <clears throat> it does have uh, Fox shocks on the front, and it's got uh, new brake hoses all around on all four corners. The suspension is tight. It's got an alignment done on it. So I've done a bunch of different things, and the, uh, the lift seems to have made the uh, death wobble worse, but it's been here before, so uh, we're not gonna blame that. You need to look at the condition of your tires. These uh, sipes, when your things are working good, they'll have a very uh, sharp edge on them and you'll have a nice smooth pattern on it, which it's got currently, but it's still getting uh, a wobble. Sometimes you can make it go away briefly just by doing a rotation, but it's not gonna make it go away. These were previously my front tires. It's probably hard to tell on the camera, but these edges are kind of rounded off. And uh, I think it's a symptom and not the cause, kinda. So uh, we'll take this to the shop, like I said, we'll uh, take the front end off it, the front brakes off it, and uh, get to work to try to fix this. Then we'll take it on a, a weekend trip, burn a few tanks of fuel through it, and see if the problem comes back. All right, we'll come to a couple stops here. See if we can get this thing to uh, start shaking. You see it's got 101, 242 miles on it. I don't have any heat in the brakes yet. Some, it's kind of funny, sometimes it doesn't matter if the brakes are hot, depends on the uh, way you're loaded, whether you got a lot of tail weight or not. So uh, that was all right for the first stop. So uh, as I drive through town here, I'll take a few shots and see if we can catch it in the act. So here we are getting ready to do the brake job. So I got a uh, three ton off-road jack here with an extension on it. It's kind of nice, not mandatory. You can lift it other ways. I'm grabbing it from the uh, lower control arm pivot. You can also get it from the lower control arm. That's how the factory jack does it from what I remember. But I'm gonna put my jack stand there instead. You can't have the jack stand and the jack in the same location. And uh, I just have a little jack stand here today. It's good enough for the weight, but I prefer bigger. This is a three and a half ton. Can't remember what my other stands are. They're like double the size, but they, they work. Sheet of plywood, usually use a steel plate. 22 millimeter socket to take the lugs off. It's the same for the factory lugs. From what I remember, impact gun. You do it by hand, just takes longer. Just have to loosen it before you lift the wheels off the ground. Then for the uh, parts, the semi-metallic pads, it'll depend whether yours is a one ton, a half ton, three quarter ton. I think they stopped making the half tons. It's probably a good thing if you overload them pretty easily. I have some Silglide. I have some uh, orange uh, brake grease. This stuff is safe to use. If you're going to use a different color of uh, the Permatex brake grease to your research, there's some problems with it reacting to rubber. Sil Glide doesn't react with rubber. It's been around for decades. And then there's a bit of grease that comes with the uh, 
pads. It comes with one package. I have some extra kicking around. I do lots of brake jobs on my vehicles. This is uh, going to break in the uh, rotor. These are fully coated everywhere. You can get some that are plated, some of them are coated. If I uh, prefer to get like the Platinum Plus from CarQuest, as you can see. Hasn't ever been a problem with their parts. The ones that are on it are uh, a Napa. They've been on there for quite a while now, maybe eight years. But uh, I had a problem with them, as I was explained. They have a, a front end shake now. So anyway, I guess we'll get set up and take off this wheel. So I'll get it lifted up. And then we will uh, secure it after that. Lift the minimum. Don't push the socket up against the wheel because you'll leave a mark. Alright, so you can see that the uh, Rotors look reasonable. There's no uh, rust or roughness on it. There's a little bit of a wave right there, but not a big deal. It's uh, they're in good shape. These are extended knuckles. It'd be a bit different than what's on your vehicle, more than likely, but that's okay. Gonna check things out. Make sure they're not gonna get bound up in here. Um, yeah, so to take this off, you need to take off the uh, calipers to change the pads. And you got to take off the uh, caliper adapters to get the rotor out of there. So I'm not going to mic this, as you can see. It's in good shape. I could try to put a dial gauge on it and check it for run out, but uh, it's just going to be better just replace it because what's going on right now isn't acceptable. So I'll get. Uh, set up to take the stuff apart and then we'll start filming again. All right, so we got things secure now. I turned the wheel towards the uh, driver's side to do the passenger side. Should have done that before I lifted it. It slipped my mind. Gives you better access to the fasteners there. So the uh, jack stand and the jack are carrying weight right now. I like to put, like I said, share the weight between them. You wouldn't want the jack stand just sitting there with no load on it because then if the, anything fell down on it, it would probably just pop out sideways. So uh, to do this job, you're going to need a, a metric kit with a, uh, a swivel. These are dangerous. Always be careful, don't get close to them because they will break and fly apart. You need an 18 and a 21. So they broke the code and they use the 18. Not every set has it. That set doesn't have it. So that's unfortunate. Let's see if we can get a, a shot of disconnecting this. Just bear it with me. Let's take the uh, caliper off first and go for the adapter. got a pin. You can lubricate that with the Sil Glide or the other organic grease. So 
like I used orange grease last time. So I did some diagnosis on this. I took this apart a couple times to make sure it was the uh, brake pads and rotors that were the issue. I'm not going just directly to that. Did my research. There's another part on the column that we can take a look at if I don't forget. That can be a source of the issue. Hopefully you can see something there. Normally you use a big C-clamp to press the cylinder in. But I don't have one, so I'm just going to use a flat screwdriver. have to secure that. So what you'll notice is that the uh, squeaking part faces forward. That's how that came off. And on this side as well. Like I said, these are in quite good shape. They're just not gonna do it for me though. So I'll have to take off this and clean this off. Take off the uh, the rotor, which is good to go now. So, let's see if I can do this gracefully. Oh, dropping the uh, caliper. So at this point, really what you're going to focus on is making sure that this is all nice and clean. You go over this with uh, the wire brush and some brake cleaner. I've got some copper anti-seas on here. Like I said, this has been apart a few times now. Um, yeah, so it's uh, pretty easy to do a brake job, even on the bigger vehicles. So I'll take this over here, see it a bit better. So you'll get new clips with your brake kit. Just pull these off. Make sure that this metal isn't all like swollen because those pads need to slide on here. If the pads are tight, they're going to kind of get hot and seize up perhaps and be a problem. But the uh, rotor looks nice. See how we gotta do this. Hasn't got a ton of miles on it since the brake job was done, but just like I said, it shakes now, so no good. You can clean these cavities and put the sill glide or whatever grease you choose to use in there. And other than that, you need a, a list of torque values, which I have here somewhere. So we'll take a look at those and then we'll start putting it back together. All right, so here's some of the critical torque values. So it's uh, 80 foot-pounds plus Loctite for the uh, caliper bolts. So it seems kind of, not sure if that's high or low. But anyway, that's what it is, so we'll be using that. I'll put a, a link to these uh, values somewhere else so you can verify them on your own. Then the front wheels are 140 foot-pounds. So I got a half-inch torque wrench here. I cleaned up the adapters. Got these uh, slides all polished up. You kind of have to chop at them with the file and use the hard edge to break off any rust or paint that might be there. So you work your way around those, get them all set up. So we'll start putting things together. Like I said, this already has the copper anti-seize on it, so I don't need to do much with that. And I've got fully coated rotors, so I don't need to wash them off as long as I don't get them dirty. So I'll pop one of them, pop the rotor on. Ah, bear with me while I work out the puzzle. I'm getting the 
on to the studs. Just put a lug on there to hold it from getting away on us. bottom up before I can get all the way. All right, so we got that on. Now we can start to put the uh, adapter on. She needs red, oh, I use red Loctite. You can use whatever you choose. 620, this is retaining compound, it's not actually Loctite. And it's green. That's a surprise. So don't follow this part of it. Okay, we're going to want to put the uh, grease on the sliders so we don't end up applying it to the uh, rotors. So I put it on both sides of the uh, slides so that when these rust, and they will. Well, it's a nuisance to get this stuff out of here. At least we're protected. Because as this rust it swells up, it locks up the rotors, the brake pads. Like that. Put these on. Sorry if that was out of focus. I was focusing on what I needed to do. You can see that there's a, a grip on the side and then it kind of grips up here. I'll put some more grease on these. Alright. Try to put this together. All right, so I'll get those on and uh, ready to torque them, and we'll start loading up the pads. All right, so we got the uh, bolts in, torqued up to 80 with the Loctite on them. Now I'll plop these uh, pads in. So like I said, the uh, scratching part goes towards the uh, front of the vehicle. Oh, it's going to be a two-handed job to get those in there. Let's see how it goes. Try not to get the uh, grease on the pad and contaminate it. I wonder if I should have loaded these up first. I think so. Oh, I got it in there. I like to put the pads on after I get the adapters on. Oh, 
Okay, that one is on. Back one might be tricky, it's hard to see. Harder to see. Now hopefully there's enough space that the caliper will take these pads without any fight. Got them stretched out. Yep. Forcing the pistons in a bit. All right, so I got to close up or push in the pistons a little bit. This is going to slide on. I've got these pins, so I'm going to have to put some uh, grease on them as well. So I'll get these uh, put in once I get the uh, caliper all the way on. So I'll get that done and uh, we'll be back. All right, so getting things lined up wasn't too bad. I just put the screwdriver in here and pulled back. Compress those pistons again. Make sure that the rubber isn't folded over where the uh, pins go in. You need that open. Fighting me a little bit. Obviously you won't be able to get these uh, in if the rubber is folded over. get those tightened up and what I'm going to do is go in and push the brakes on the van get the uh, caliper compressed again so there's no gap otherwise the first time you go and drive it there'd be a big gap you won't be able to stop so that wouldn't be any good you have a could have an accident make sure that the uh, rotors are clean then I'll start to put the wheel back on all right you probably can't see anything has changed but I got the uh, two bolts tightened down for the slide pins Rotors are looking good and clean. And uh, pump the brakes a couple times to get that tightened up. So that's uh, good to go. It's gripping a little bit, but it's no major drag. So I know that the uh, pistons, nothing is seized up and holding the brakes on. So that's cool. Not much to see there. Gotta do the other side, which is the same obviously as this side. You have the uh, dragging components up front. That's uh, about it. Last part I wanted to show is, uh, you're not going to be able to see anything, I'm sorry for this, but just to give you a hint. Up in the steering column, uh, it's impossible to see. There's a, a boot, and if you pull that back, there's a, a plastic bushing. So if your U-joints are good in your steering column, that bushing can still be bad and your steering wheel can jiggle around when you're going over bumps. But uh, it's something to look at. It's a common problem on the uh, Chevy trucks. So please have a look at that. I'm going to do this side here. I'll take the van out on the road for the weekend and uh, we'll have some reports after that. Alright, so it's been about 1200 miles since I did the front brake job on the van here. I'm happy to report that uh, changing the brake pads and front rotors fixed the uh, death wobble in the vehicle. As you can see, I'm slowing down. There's no problem whatsoever. So I guess we'll, uh, I'll go park the vehicle somewhere where we can talk about uh, overall what I did. And then we'll, uh, I guess we'll wrap up the video at that point. So just head down this road and do a loop and uh, we'll be back.
All right, so I guess, uh, like I said, it was about 1,200 miles since I did the front brakes on this vehicle. It's been a couple weeks, and I'm very happy with the end results. Going with the semi-metallic is much better than the ceramic brakes on this vehicle. I've been uh, on the highways doing 85 miles an hour with the van, and then uh, I've been through the city and stop and go in Montreal, stopping a lot, barely moving at all, using the brakes a lot. Then I've been in the Laurentian Mountains, north of Montreal, in the Laurentides, I guess they call them. And uh, I went down one grade, it was like 8 to 18%, it was a pretty steep grade. I forgot with this vehicle that you need the downshift going up and down the hills. And I overheated the front brakes going down the, that grade. And you could smell the brakes a lot in the van, but uh, luckily I didn't do it enough of an overheating job on them to warp the brakes, because that would have been kind of unfortunate. To ruin them in the first trip but that's okay i've been up to the bruce peninsula and uh, on various different kinds of highways there and things have been great so very happy with that being all over ontario and a bit of quebec so we're good to go you will see i had different tires on than i did in the original part of the video so coming back from montreal i was going just down the highway doing about 75 miles an hour I felt a bit of a, a wobble come up I thought well, that's kind of weird then the wobble started to get like worse fast so I pulled off the road trying to figure out what it was I thought I might have had a loose wheel went over the mall with a breaker bar they were all tight so uh, I got off the main highway and took a, a single lane road back into Kingston and uh, what I discovered was that I tore a belt on this tire like the front driver's tire and the tire had almost gone oval like it was up a lot luckily I didn't blow the tire up and I'm glad I didn't ignore it thinking oh it's just gonna it would be fine for another 45 minutes or something because if I had got, continued going down the highway with that it probably would have separated and tore the side of the vehicle off and possibly crashed and all kinds of problems so that's one thing to keep in mind with a, a vehicle is that when you, if you get a new vibration you gotta deal with it right away like at least investigate figure out what it is so I thought I'd mention that and I tried to show in the video about a steering column bushing so it turns out that this van doesn't have it the 2005 Chevy Expresses do with the uh, stability control but this one doesn't have it so it's something to think about is that if you got a, a rattle in your column there is a bushing that you can replace in there on some vans but not all of them so ultimately make sure your suspension is tight all the joints are tight when i had it into the garage they checked it all over again for me they said that this uh, wheel actually the lower ball joint is starting to get a little bit loose on it just at the beginning so i'll have to deal with it before it munches up that tire and uh, that's uh, about it. This should be a good solution for the death wobble. I couldn't re get a chance to record that when I'm driving, but if you're watching this video, you probably already know what it feels like and you want to get rid of it. So thank you very much for watching.